Hi guys and welcome back to NodeFlow. So this is the second video of the Karma Roadmap series. Last time we saw together how to set up parallax shading in Karma and how to randomize texture placement on a building facade. Today we'll make our own textures in Photoshop to better understand how the system works. We'll introduce the concept of slices and we'll join multiple windows to make them look as they are part of the same room. So without further ado, let's start. <music> So in this case, I will start in Photoshop. I want to create a custom project. I will name it 2K EXR, and I will have a width and a height of 2048 and a resolution of 300. I will then create it, and now I need to divide it in a three by three. I will bring up my calculator and I will do 2048 divided by three, and that's 682.6. So I will just drag on one of these and try to match it. If you don't see these guides, Control R will bring them up. Then I will multiply this number by two and I will play another one here. That's perfect. Now I need to do the same thing for the horizontal axis. I will just create an empty layer and I will delete my background. I will then create a rectangle. I don't care about size. I will just press OK. I will make it gray and then I will just rasterize it. So I will press Ctrl T to scale it. I will snap it here and then move it here. Then I will take this one, Ctrl J to duplicate it and then Ctrl T to rotate it by 90 degrees. I can now merge them, so right click and merge layers, and then I will import some asset that I was able to download. I will also be sure to share all of these in the description, so I'll just drag and drop all of them, and I will position them accordingly. So because I want this one to be a slice, I will put it down here. Now we briefly introduced the concept of slices last lesson. So basically slices are just like extra cards that you can put in a scene to make that look a little bit more three-dimensional. So while all of these represent the left, the right wall, the ceiling and the floor, all these are extra spaces where you can actually add extra cards to make it look more real. So in this case, I will use a curtain, then I can import my floor and I will scale it right here. I will import some of my furniture, same logic, I will scale it down and I will move it up. With the sofa, because I want to have it a little bit farther from the wall, I will just use it as a slice and I will make sure that the feet touches the ground as it should be. And lastly, I have just some simple decorations. I will move it on top to see how big they should be. I get something like that makes sense. And then I will move it here. So this is most of the stuff that I will be doing today regarding the creation of the texture. To make it a little bit more realistic, I also found that adding a fake ambient occlusion could help. So let's see together how can we do that. I will create an extra layer on top. I will then press B to bring up my brush. I will make my brush slightly bigger. I will change the color to a very dark gray. Zooming in, clicking once here then shift and click down here. I will then repeat the same process for all the edges. Once I have it, I can just go into filter and choose blur and Gaussian blur. For me, a value of 47 worked perfectly. So I will then press okay. And I want to make sure that for instance, this doesn't get darker because of the ambient occlusion. So I will move this one on top. Also the paintings, I can move them on top. I will leave the floor down because I like the effect over here. And I will also move the curtain on top. So as you can see, it's not that complex and definitely you can place objects that make a little bit more sense together. And also the curtain that you'll find in the folder has a lower opacity. As you can see, you can see through. In case you're using external asset, make sure to reduce the opacity of the curtain so you can actually see through. It's now time to export all of this as an EXR. So I'll press Ctrl S. I will call this map Karma 2 and I will write the extension manually so I will write dot .exr. Now I can press save and it's finally time to go in Houdini. In Houdini I would like to start with the same setup of last time when we just had one grid and a room map frame setting all the attributes for us. Then we can go into Solaris. I will hold N and switch to Lops. And what I will be tweaking for now is just a simple window. Let's try to render to see by default how does it look like. And we have the, the same result as last time. We can now import our texture. So I will just go here and paste my puff. As you can see, it's working fine. We just need to add the layers that we added in Photoshop. Let's enable Slice 1. And that's for the curtain. As you can see, it adds a lot of realism to the overall scene. And then we can add the Slice 4 and that's our sofa. Again, I decided to add it as a slice because I can then change the depth. So in slices, you have a way to control how close or how far to the window it should be. So if I change the position of the sofa, I'm bringing it closer or farther away. And again, I like this kind of control. So you can imagine that if you master this workflow, you can add a lot of variation. So definitely take your time and experiment with this. Beautiful, now that we have this working, 
let's introduce the concept of adding multiple windows, but they are all part of the same room. So I will stop my render and I will go in OBJ again. Here I will create a new geonode. I will name it multiple windows and I will go inside. The setup is the same. In fact, I can just copy paste the same grid and the same room up frame in my multiple windows, but there is a slight difference. First of all, let's create more than one window. So I will move my grid over here and I will create a merge. I will then make my grid smaller on the X axis. So I guess something like that. And I can now duplicate it here and connect it. And of course I will need to place this manually. Okay, that's fine. Now that I have something like that, I can proceed. So if you notice in the room map frame, we defined the room ID as the identity that the Windows has in the last lesson. So if I visualize it, I'm able to see that here we have a value of one, here we have a zero, and here we have a two. This means that they will all be treated by the system as separate rooms and not as a part of the same room. To fix that, I will just add a line of code. So I will create an attribute wrangle. I want to run it on primitives. And I will say that my attribute room ID, of course, be mindful of the upper cases, it's equal to zero or whatever number, because the important thing is that the number is the same for all of them. Now you see still nothing changes and that's because the room map frame needs to be changed to attribute. Now you will see these vectors going a little bit crazy, but that's because they are all part of the same room. I can now remove the visualization and I will name this one out multiple windows. It's now time to go into Solaris. Over here, I will just duplicate the same SOP import and same material. I will make sure then to have different names. So of course, I want this one to be my multiple window. This one will be called multiple window material. And then I will choose my file into the SOP import. So from here, I will choose my out multiple window. That's working fine. Let's go into the material. It's already reading our texture, but for now, I will just disable the slices. Oh yeah, I just forgot to assign the material. Let's go into the material library and let's click on this arrow and then on our geometry and press enter. You will see that now it's working fine. We have just one giant window. So actually, there are three of them, but they're all part of the same room. So it's a little bit of a more complex or tricky setup but it's working fine. We can now test introducing the slices. I guess the first one will be a little bit stretched. It still looks pretty decent, to be honest. And the second one, of course, is the slice four. Yeah, definitely a little bit stretched. But the nice thing is that we can actually change the size of each one of them. In my sofa, I can change the scale on X and make it a little bit smaller. And as usual, I can bring it closer or farther away. So I hope you learned something new. I hope this was useful because honestly, if you start doing your own textures, you don't even need to pay a subscription, of course. And once you find the right asset, it will not be too complicated to created something like that. Then imagine this one scaled and randomized on a building facade as we saw in the first video. And I really think it's a very useful setup. So thank you for staying with me and I will see you in the next one. Cheers. Mm -hmm.